in front of you. Uh, yeah, keep, keep it like that. Okay, oh. Look at the lens. Sorry, Stare worry. deeply into the camera's eyes. Yeah. yeah. These shoes are amazing. These shoes are made by um, a, a brand called Purified, which recently launched in London earlier this year. Um, Will Verona is the founder, and they are incredibly special um, to me, but, I, but to the world. They should be special to the world because they are plastic free. And they're made with NFW's Miram Leather Alternative, which is plant-based, plastic free leather. And then with Pliant, which is a natural rubber shoe sole that's made with our bio-curative, um, that's also 100% bio-based. We make a sort of a system of plastic free materials in the hope that brands will sort of take up the challenge of designing entirely plastic free products. Because if you make a product and you replace one plastic material with something that's better, but everything else about that product is still plastic, then we're not yet at a place where we can do anything with it other than still put it in the landfill. But once more and more people start to make things that are entirely plastic free, then we can redesign end of life systems. So Purified actually has a take back program where consumers can send their old shoes when it's time back to Purified. Purified them can send them up to us and then we can grind them up and then they can go back to the uh, back to the earth because once more and more brands start to design things without plastics then we can rethink the system of what happens to waste at end of life and it can stop being waste um, and that's really the that's the ultimate goal I'm going to tell them for the first time because I haven't heard anything. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Camera's running. Straight to as you know, we're providing uh, cooling services uh, to fisher fox and farmers, uh, mostly in the most underserved parts of Africa. And there is no better way to validate that uh, rather than to have this temperature uh, stick. So basically, um, at, the, at the lake or landing site, um, when we receive the fish from the fisher fox, the way we validate whether they have been using our product or they have kept the product at the best possible condition is to using this, uh, checking the temperature of the fish and telling them, okay, you need to add more ice or you know, uh, give them feedback and then take the fish. And of course, that's the first handshake we have with them. We pay them uh, for, for, for the product they've delivered. And when we take the product and we take it now to the urban markets, while we are selling the product to the customers, we, again, we use this as a way to validate that the product has been kept in the best possible conditions. And by doing so from the lake to the plate, uh, we are able to fetch a premium for the fisher folk, uh, creating a win-win for the fisher folk and ourselves. And so um, this literally is the yardstick uh, that we use to measure whether we are keeping it cool. So it's not leather, but it's better. So we grow it from agri-crop waste using mushroom mycelium. We can use this into many applications, from fashions into automotive. So we've been collaborating with more than 100 of artisans and designers in order to explore these materials into beautiful items. He said he didn't get he's so, such a rush, he didn't finish painting his face. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Oñucar Domingo Pérez. Soy indígena Achuar de Ecuador. Yo soy presidente de Alianzas Cuencas Sagradas, que es la, el cuidado permanente, protección de 35 millones de hectáreas. Es no más tala de este bosque en pie. Eso es el primer paso de solución. El segundo es también esta gran alianza entre indígenas no indígenas para poder avanzar acciones en los territorios. La reforestación, la restauración y eh, limpieza de los ríos contaminados. Eso es la solución urgente para la vida. Este es un collar hecho trabajo de mujeres a chuar. Eh, Pero aquí está eh, la imagen de jaguar, este, es pantera, muy temido en la selva. Y el primer espíritu que me dio fuerza espiritual para la visión futuro de todos los viajes que yo estoy realizando fue jaguar. Él me dijo, 
me dio orientaciones, me dio el propósito de la vida. Entonces, es por eso que yo adoro mucho, confío mucho en el espíritu de Jaguar y por eso también tengo esa bendición. Cuando hay problema tengo que ir porque es Jaguar es animal indicador, pero también es el pacificador, controlador, neutro. ¿ya? Entonces, es eso. Eh, por eso también siempre pongo esto en mi pecho, porque es para mí es protección. Él anda conmigo y estoy cumpliendo la misión que él me dijo. This is a cookie where actually kind of a condense all the work that we have been doing so far because the chocolate chips inside the cookies are actually made with one of our fermented ingredients. So we, we use the skins and seeds of grape and the cereal base we ferment to change the flavor and create cocoa notes and then we can replace all the dry matter um, of the chocolate and can create alternatives to chocolate. So that's what it is. So it, it represents all the work of all the research that we did, but also all the industrialization formulation that's condensed in a cookie. So it's a very concrete, and I think it's very common, ordinary, but uh, very important for us <laughs> in the company. <laughs> What this is, is this is a solid state heat to power technology. So you, you apply heat on one side, cold on the other, produces electricity. So if you think about this, for, the last, for more than 100 years, the only way we could turn heat into electricity is to spin something. Very complex, large rotating equipment. That limits what we can do in society because of that complexity. This does the work of a turbine inside of it. So you think about how simple this is and what a paradigm shift it is for heat to power conversion. So now you can put these far more places in the world in industry. It allows us to democratize heat to power. So if you think about it, only the most advanced companies in the world can basically convert heat to power. And yet heat is all around us. So in a way, although this is a breakthrough for industry, it's really a breakthrough for society because this means we can do, go more places we can go into more communities and provide that badly needed electricity. And to do this, we had to basically create three fundamental areas of breakthrough. We had to develop a material science that was world record setting, and that's actually inside this cartridge. Then we had to be able to produce it and manufacture it at scale. And then we had to deploy it in an industrial setting. Sure, there's gonna be a bit smelly. You might not be able to get it out of your noses for the next few hours. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, dehydrated seaweed. This is the seaweed that we work with the farmers to produce. So the seaweed farmers will dry it to this before we before we buy it. We bought it here just to really show people, you know, there's all sorts of types of seaweed. There's thousands and thousands of, there's 12,000 plus, I think, species of seaweeds. Um, most people have in their mind a particular idea of what seaweed looks like. And they often think of kelp or they think of what you find a bladder rack that you find on the beach. Um, this is actually a red seaweed, or it doesn't look very red, right? Um, but it's, um, I think it's hard for people to really get a view of what this is unless, until they can actually see it and feel it. Um, and then the idea that you can turn this into anything from toothpaste to ice cream to shoe polish, cosmetics, or used for firefighting, um, fining beer, fining wine, it's used, all sorts of different things. Um, and this is, this, yeah, you can, make, you can even make plastics and fabrics from it um, with the right technologies. So, uh, I was asked to bring something that is fundamental to our solution and I decided the concept would be not to bring anything. What we are trying to do, the only way to build the houses cheap enough that the poorest families can afford them is to use the material that's all around you. Bringing dirt from Nepal to Cape Town didn't make any sense when we have dirt right here. Our bricks are made of sand, soil, uh, cement and a little bit of, of industrial ashes. They can also be made from some other local materials, but the point is, it is more than 90% local materials that goes into them. That's why it's cheap. That's why uh, local people are making it themselves. That's why it's sustainable. That's how we make sure that these are the families building their own communities, and that's the only sustainable way to do it. Sadistic. Making me hold 
to some place. <laughs> this is a liter bottle of whiskey and it took 15 liters of water approximately to make this bottle of whiskey. There are millions of liters of whiskey made every month in Scotland and the volume of byproduct that comes with that is huge. And so what we're able to do is we produce this algae that produces omega-3s, which keeps the fish in the ocean, but they need fed some. And so what we're able to do is to use that byproduct from the whiskey industry as algae food. And by consuming the, the nutrients in that byproduct, we're able to effectively clean up that, that for the whiskey industry. So we, we go back to that, that conversation around keeping fish in the sea and keeping waste out of it. Oceans have been for billions of years taking carbon dioxide out and storing it securely. And the ocean stores it generally as two things. So as dissolved carbon, which you can't see, touch, it's there, dissolved in the seawater, and as solid carbon, it's often in the forms of corals and seashells and other sea creatures, locking away the carbon dioxide for good. Um, we know the oceans have been doing that. 30% um, of our emissions anyway would wind up in the oceans and have been. What Aquatic does is increase the rate at which that occurs. And this vial here is how we're going to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We store it as calcium carbonate. It's solid, white, um, locked away carbon, and it'll stay like this for billions of years.